Yes. I need him to go out after our after the program's over, Nate, to show me what I did wrong. <laughs> Work on your stroke. 50, 55 years or so ago. Your new nickname is Clutch, Bill. Clutch. Clutch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Nate, as a basketball coach, is it normal for a free throw to go at a 45-degree angle after you release it? No, not necessarily. But, you know, it's all about the fundamentals. It was my follow-through uh, follow <laughs> that messed me up. Uh, also, Maria Lawrence is in studio with us as well. She was known as Elbows back in her days playing high school Indeed basketball. Indeed I was. Yeah, I was a, a foul. Um, I, I know you'd find this hard to believe, but I had a couple foul outs of several. <laughs> DQ. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there's your new nickname. You, yeah. you realize, Rob, that most of us lose our nicknames after we leave high school. Not Maria. Yeah. <laughs> Maria still keeps the nickname yeah, there Elbows. Go. She is Elbows. The, D, the DQ. I think I like that one now. Yeah. There you go. Our guest is Sheriff Nate Harmon, who I, we just found out today coached yeah. high school basketball and for he's, six years. he's willing to take us on, show yeah. us uh, what we should have been doing wrong all these years. Where did you coach hoops? Well, I, uh, I, I did two years in the rec league um mm -hmm. obviously with my kids and and then uh, as my kids grew older um and, and out of high school uh, i wanted to continue uh, mentoring the kids and so uh i coached uh uh, ninth grade uh, freshman basketball. I did not know. Girls or boys? Girls. Girls. It's, it's like a different. Yeah, it's nine, a different nine to world. Nine daughters it? all over again. Isn't yeah, it? it's a different world. I remember my daughter's coach, and what he would have like in his gym bag. Yeah. For when you coached girls, you had different items that you brought along oh, just man. in case. Are you still? So. Are you trying to be polite? Yes. <laughs> of course I am. Using some discretion. Right. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Different items. Uh, <laughs> Nate, a couple of questions for you. Uh, yesterday, Eddie Gokenauer put together a meeting between you and, I guess, members of the school board. I'm going to ask you about attendance, uh, who was all there for that and how that went in a moment. But the first thing I want to do is backtrack to last week when you started – a conversation that led to that meeting yesterday that Eddie uh, called in which you came on the radio and you mentioned that there were security concerns in the schools. You were frustrated that you couldn't get them addressed in a timely fashion. And uh, there was some frustration maybe with the legislature too, in terms of trying to get uh, funding for SROs and whatever. And uh, the next day we had uh, Ron Stevens, who is the interim superintendent, Jackie Long, the vice president of the board, uh, Melissa Power, also on the Board of Education, all of whom expressed disappointment that you went public with this information instead of going to them directly. Why did you go public with your complaints that morning? Well, you know, I've, I've had multiple conversations with multiple organizations, um, and um, I won't say it, it fell on deaf ears. There, it, it was fruitful. It was good. There was some ideas and whatnot, but the movement uh, wasn't uh, what I was expecting. Uh, and... Um, I go around these schools all the time, just came from one. I was able to witness a fire drill this morning. Um, you know, the ground branch educators uh, are just as frustrated. So when I hear various uh, issues arise from them, you know, it, you, if you keep your ear close to the ground, there's you learn a lot. And, um, you know, I learned that early on, keep your mouth shut and open your ears. And I did that, and I've done that since taking office. I've even done that as a father um, and coaching at a school and then as an instructor with emergency preparedness and now as in law enforcement. And it, it, it's a – one of the board members put it right yesterday, and it, it's a mindset. It's a mindset change that needs to happen. I believe it did happen, and, and uh, things were got gotten uh, things got addressed. And if it takes kicking the hornet's nest, versus, which, is, which is what you did, versus the can down the road, then it is what it is. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, I apologized if I offended anybody. And, and but uh, we had some serious candid conversations yesterday, and and I respect that more than anything. It is a collective effort, and uh, we all. Play a part. Who was at the meeting yesterday? So you had uh, two board members, uh, the president, uh, Mr. Murphy, the, you had uh, uh, Miss Long, um, you had uh, Mr. Gokenauer, councilman, you had uh, chief of police, George Swartwood, you had uh, Clay Elwanger, internal investigator for the school system, you've had Ron Stevens, you had Dan Comer, you had Ron Branch, uh, I have my chief of police, I have my captain for special operations who oversees the SROs. Um, there was David Dilley, he's director of special education. 
um, and the uh, Joe Burton, the director of maintenance. Good luck, the big meeting. I was going to say, Sheriff, that was a large number of people, much larger than what I would assume could be a productive meeting. But you said earlier off air that it's an exceptionally productive meeting. So before we get to what came out of it, what were the mechanics of it? Did everybody participate? Did you have a select group uh, that did most of the talking? Uh, because, again, you had a large number of people there. Uh, everybody participated and expressed um, you know, their viewpoints. And um, I've been waiting for that for quite a long time. And um, there was some understanding that took place in that. And I think part of frustration in general, not just mine, but everybody's when you get frustrated it's either a misunderstanding or you just didn't know the red tape process with things so uh, that was brought out uh, which uh, lessens the frustration but you know there was uh, issues were covered so what were some of the uh, uh, well understood <clears throat> concrete directions that you picked up from, from the meeting what did you decide as a corporate body that you're going to do as a corporate body well we're going to you know instead of uh, and i've always advocated the left hand needs to talk to the right and um, organizations need to collaborate together consistently um, that came out that uh, you know i'm going to call for a uh, school safety subcommittee with the local emergency planning committee where we'll have those similar people at the table now and we'll talk about uh, you know <clears throat> upgrades and processes and prioritizing what needs to be done, especially with these schools. What needs to be done? There's a whole whole array array of things that need to be done. Uh, was a lot of was the hardening of the schools is one. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the one that's going to require the big bucks. Mm -hmm. uh, the the procedures such as the appropriate fire drills, where to go and mm -hmm. to ensure the doors are locked. Uh, that can be done as well. But going back to the one that requires the big bucks, the hardening of the schools, mm -hmm. uh, is there some agreement on exactly what should be done? Uh, my point, and uh, let me make my one more, one more point here. Uh, talking to a Delegate Hornby last week, same time you and I, were, uh, you and I and Rob were talking. Uh, he mentioned that there had been money from the from the legislators that had been given to the schools, but the money were all for cameras, and I'm sure cameras are important. But is that the number one issue for the hardening of the schools? No, no, it's not. Okay. And that was discussed yesterday. Okay. Um, you know, um, we collaboratively talked about upgrades and, and what needs to be done. Uh, we offered our opinions, uh, and I think we were heard, uh, especially from a public safety uh, standpoint. Uh, that, and, you know, uh, true defense for those that inherited these issues, like the older buildings, like uh, Mr. Burton was very uh, – uh, professional <coughs> courteous and, and, and forthcoming with his information and, and work orders and how much they've done they've done a huge amount uh, I would not want his workload um, uh, and, and that was the first time I'm, I met him and um, you know again true professional he's going to be part of this um, you know uh, school safety subcommittee and he needs to be because when the money starts coming in when the bonds get sold and and, and the, the upgrades are to happen then we need to have a a comprehensive plan before that occurs and we need to have a roadmap for those priorities because mr stevens was right you know they do have older buildings and it you know adding a a wall for an observation area is not all that difficult it is a structural change and it does cost money however uh, these older buildings can suck the life out of a fund too when you talk about yeah, these the upgrades that are needed so I completely have empathy for those situations and and uh, but uh, I could say uh, honestly that, that that we've wanted to be part of that conversation all along now we are uh, and they're going to get opinions from uh, you know a maintenance mindset a public safety mindset uh, an educator's mindset a board member's mindset a council member's mindset you know and everybody's going to be part of this uh the this planning now yeah i asked eddie uh a couple so days ago was he planning to have anybody from the legislators involved because they're going to be the ones that will hopefully give the money that's that's going to be required a lot of the money and eddie's comment was no we have to plan among ourselves first and then once we get in 
an idea of what we need to do, how how to do it. Then they would approach the legislation. Mm-hmm. I thought that made a lot of sense. It did. It did. I, my experience with legislation, I mean, uh, in, instead of, uh, you know, eight people coming to the table, they've got to contend with 100 delegates and, and all yeah, those senators, exactly. and they all got to collectively meet in, in a committee and, and whatnot. So there's a lot of discussion that is had. So the processes are a little slower. I know Delegate uh, Hardy, Delegate Hornby, Delegate Horst, um, Senator Barrett, Senator Rucker, um, uh, I would say uh, Senator uh, Delegate Householder. We've all had those discussions with them, and they take it just as passionately as oh, we they do. do. They do, and yeah. and they are working on that. And I, mm-hmm. you know, I've had discussions with Delegate uh, Hardy uh, down in Charleston why he was vice chair of the Finance Committee. You know, he he's still on this and passionate about it and he's still meeting with me about how we can fund this we've placed calls to justice and community services um and i've talked to those folks a couple days ago where there's grant funding that can help sros um we've got a plan in place i don't want to announce yet that until we can solidify this um where we're going to have uh, a lot more sros than i anticipated uh here uh i would say within the next uh three years Good. Now, I realize there have been a lot of small meetings, one-on-one or one-on-three or four, uh, through the years. But it's not as if you've not been talking. You've been talking a great deal. Yes. But was yesterday's meeting the first comprehensive meeting getting all the players around the table? It was. Yeah. It was. And I enjoyed every minute of it. Yeah. It, uh, it was uh, an understanding from uh, internal uh, disciplinary process, uh, how the school handles things. Um, uh, it was an external safety um, discussion, um, and, and we got to hear from all parties. And the one thing that resonated and echoed in that room uh, from everybody's mouth is that we have to be in this together. We Everybody is just as passionate as I am about uh, school safety, especially when you talk to uh, talk about, uh, you know, safeguarding our kids. Uh, I don't think there was anybody in that room that uh, that didn't say that one time or another. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Mr. Gokenauer especially, he started the meeting with that same sentiment. Yes, so one more question. So kicking, kicking the hornet's nest down the road mm-hmm. had some benefits. Absolutely. Maria. I was just, I sort of just got taken aback by the hornet's nest coming back out again. Um, Would you say, Sheriff, then the biggest issue is the biggest issue outside, external, um, worried about obviously a school shooting, something like that, somebody coming in from the outside, or internal the the student disciplinary situation and special ed and 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 regular uh regular ed problems behaviors what's what's the key or what's the highest priority there or are they about on the same level they are on the same level okay. they need they but they both need just as much attention as the other um and, and we discussed that yesterday mm-hmm. because you know it, if, if you look at, uh, historically, uh, the surveys that have been done on these things that have happened nationally, um, you have uh, 83% of all instances that has happened where uh, you know, four out of five folks knew about these violent tendencies before the action apps actually happened. So when we need to talk about preventative measures, uh, digital threat assessments, and you know more, uh, uh, you know when when a student displays uh, violent behavior, you know is it a manifestation of the disorder or mm-hmm. is are we making mm-hmm. this situation worse? Um, and and what's the processes for that? Uh, but the assessments are important. Mm-hmm. If we got to be ahead of it, we need to be more preventative. That was discussed um, uh, yesterday. Uh, there's some resolutions with some concerning situations that I had, and and uh, that I wasn't aware of before. And uh, uh, but we are now uh, able to talk about that amongst each other on the preventative side of it. So they're both equally important. Is is arming teachers and staff? Um, <clears throat> Is that the answer? I think the answer would be to have a uh, a sheriff overseen program 
and collaboration with the schools where we have uh, citizens uh, and educators, uh, volunteers, those that are vetted with uh, appropriate backgrounds that uh, you know take a psychological and, and polygraph uh, test that are trained with us. I, I think there's a, a right way to do it. Um, I don't I don't I don't like what I see in terms of a growing frustration uh, publicly every time that, that there's that's an incident, the answer that, mm-hmm. that yeah you see folks uh, talking about wanting to be you know armed and and I cannot fault them for making those comments because sure. they're usually a father or a veteran or something like that and um, so we have to understand that that's a growing issue not necessarily because of what we're doing is what's happening nationally. So let's, let's have a program. Let's, mm-hmm. let's, uh, we talked about last year, Delegate Hornby brought it up that, uh, you know, where the bill died at, but we're going to breathe life back into that again. And uh, it's going, um, I'm hoping that we can have some injects that say, you know, it's seen overseen by the sheriff's office because you can't have a, a, a loose run program like that. Uh, there's, there's that everybody just carry has a permit right. to carry right. and brings it. Yeah, the training is is of most importance. I mean, imagine an incident happening and we enter a building with someone that is not uh, associated or familiar with what our tactics are. Mm-hmm. Um, sheriff, let me pick up on something you said a second ago. You said a sheriff over oversight uh, overview. Uh, in my view, and this may be overly simplistic, there are three components to the issue. One is the mental health, mental health awareness. Second is the training or prevention we have inside of a side of building that could be the SROs or the guardian program. And the third is a comprehensive review of the hardening of the schools, how vulnerable the schools are. Mm -hmm. Now, certainly there is a role for the Sheriff's Department to play, I think, in the SRO and the guardian program. The mental health issue and the hardening of the school, this is something that the schools are going to have to take a very, the school system, take a very aggressive role to address I guess my point is we have these three components and it's so it's so convenient to look at one of the three and concentrate on one of the three where all all components are are very important Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, you know, one of the things that was brought out yesterday that I wasn't familiar with was how tied the hands are of the school mm-hmm. system by federal law in terms of how you deal with uh, behavioral disorders and how you categorize whether or not it's a manifestation of the disorder and whatnot. And then at what levels uh, do we move down to the next higher level in terms of disciplinary actions and whatnot? Uh, you're right, Bill. I, I said it once before on the show. I think that there needs to be an investment in the mental health and mental hygiene portion here locally or a partnership or MOU with uh, you know across state line uh, already built facilities that we that can help us out um, but uh, I the the mental health or mental hygiene issue definitely needs to be addressed of course that's going to be more of a legislative issue I think um, and then when you talk about the training side of things to avoid a blue on blue situation, we have to have a partnership and a collaboration with whatever program uh, better safeguards our school. And we've, I'm proud to say that uh, with the school system, and, and I brought it up again yesterday, that come uh, July, uh, the month of July, we already have set in stone a, a very large emergency preparedness event. Educators are taking place. Uh, we're, it's it's going to be a very uh, elaborate uh training day or i should say two days 20 26th and 27th uh, but uh it's it, it's the, i think you'll have educators walking away very uh, a lot more confident um in their abilities to uh safeguard their children so uh, in sum there are three components uh of school security and we need to address all three mm-hmm. hopefully in somewhat parallel step but mm-hmm. we need to address all three i think i think you can address the one while we're addressing the other yeah. i think yeah. everything yeah. can happen yeah. fluidly and that's the other beauty about yesterday is we just it's going to be more efficient now uh I, why very, is that Nick? because you've 
the left hand is talking to the right hand. We are now, we have the right people and got their attention, and we're going to establish a subcommittee where these folks are, we're consistently meeting at the table, and we're going to roll out these ideas, and we're going to get thoughts and, and opinions from folks that this is a good idea, this might not be such a good idea, you know, whether, you know, whether we're talking discussions about reunification, you know, um, hardening uh, areas, um, you know, uh, dealing with the, the internal issues, if you will, um, that is in place now. And so I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased and about that. Before you so, go, Maria, hold on one second. Um, in regards to the Board of Education and your relationship with them. Mm -hmm. Are you concerned about that relationship at all right now? Not at all. Not at all. I, you know, I, again, yesterday I apologized for my frustration, uh, and, um, but I expressed the reasons why I had it. I think there was uh, not so much an epiphany of things, but I think things were brought to light that uh, other folks did not know or were not aware of. Like I said, a lot of us inherited some things. And... Um, you know, I, I was very candid and and my uh, requests and what points I wanted to make, I think I was heard, and I think everybody was heard. I, and so I, I'm very pleased with the outcome of it. I think our relationship is a lot stronger now because of it. In regards to a, a subcommittee or your liaisons with the board, are there specific board members appointed to this already that you'll be communicating with, or is that still to come? Uh, as far as the school board members, that's still to come uh, in terms of who might that representative be, but I want them there. Because, uh, again, the board versus the school admin, they're two different entities, and, and we want to make sure there is no information gaps. Like everybody's on the same page. Where we're at in construction upgrades, where we're at with training our educational staff, um, you know, what's current going on and I think all of us being on the same page is a lot better than us just guessing like what what upgrades what's the what's the layout or blueprint of how we're going to do this where's our priorities at instead of, uh, of just me as a sheriff and guessing where those situations where they're at with those things now we're now we're going to discuss them Maria uh, so then the next step is the meeting of this subcommittee do you have a date set yet sheriff or um, at the uh, the next local emergency planning committee, the, ah. you know the, the the powers that be that lead that don't know this yet, but I will be requesting uh, that we establish a school safety subcommittee. Okay. Well, along that same line, will uh, the county commission, I Eddie Gokenhauer, still remain involved? He, he specifically requested to be good, involved. Good. Yes. Nate, final thought. Um, I think that uh, again. Every bit of discussion that we've had yesterday, it was very productive, and there wasn't a single person in that room that doesn't agree that it takes a collaborative effort, a village, to make these things happen because there's so many hands involved. Um, and, and it was a beautiful thing to walk in that room and see additional elected officials, school, school board members, presidents, vice presidents, councilmen, uh, maintenance folks, special ed. Uh, there was a clear understanding of a direction move moving forward. And, and that's, that's exactly what my goal was. And, and I was very pleased with the outcomes of that. Thank you for coming in. Thank you.